Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hello. Welcome to our show today. As always, in this episode, Jill and I talk about land investment only works with motivation. Boy, we wrapped up yesterday's show with that mm-hmm. sentence, I think. Kind of, yeah. Weird. Land investment only works with motivation. Before we get into it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landacademy.com online community. It's free. Okay. Bay asked, when optioning a property, should I list the full information in the listing? What do I do if buyers look up the property and see that I'm not the owner? Go ahead, Joe. Or you I, go I'll ahead. answer if you want. <laughs> go ahead, Jack. No, you go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> so, um, like, this is a great opportunity to, to big picture say this. This question and tons of questions you're going to see throughout your career start to get really repeated. And what I do is I just practice canned answers. So here's my canned response when I get this question. No, it's not the, hey, buyer, the property's not in my name. Um, it takes a tr- uh, sometimes up to a year for the recorder and the assessor to get on the same page about who owns it. So first it gets recorded, it goes to a database, and if it's a real urban county, it, they have the same database and it gets recorded quickly and if the assessor gets updated. In some of the rural counties, it takes a year. I've seen it take two years. So that should always be your answer about why isn't this property in, in, your, in your name, not just about optioning. However... You never want to lie. So if somebody's smart enough to say, you know, I did all my due diligence. I want to buy the property. The pri- property is priced right. How do I know you own this thing? If it's above $4,000, here's, here what we, here's what we do. We do it uh, through escrow. And you need to be real upfront about with the escrow agent. There's all these tiny little boutique escrow companies popping up everywhere. And the more boutique they are and the more new they are, the more willing they are to do creative stuff for you. So you're not gonna find a regular first American title agent who's gonna do a lot of independent servicing and it's not their fault, they just have regulations that come down from corporate and that's how they have to do it. So you wanna explain to the escrow agent that this is a dual closing and uh, it'd be great if, you know, we don't discuss the economics of the thing with every single uh, single party, Mm -hmm. but I don't think that it that should necessarily close the deal. If the person, the buyer is uh, interested in the property, they like it, they like the price, they like the terms, I think it's okay to disclose the whole thing. Just you say, know yeah, what's funny? It's not. Well, I, well you, you use the term that I have, um, I have equitable title. That's an easy thing if you just say that too. I have equitable title in the, pro- in the property and leave it at that. What, what I was gonna add, which is kind of funny, I've, I've never had a person who questioned my ownership and and how do I say this? I've had people that have questioned my ownership and they've even asked me to send them a copy of the recorded deeds to prove it. Those guys are never they never follow through. They don't, don't even anything. bother. Yeah. They don't buy they don't buy it. They're not real. They're looking buyers. for a problem. They are they it's just instead weird. of looking for a way to get the deal done. Exactly. So yeah, if anyone says to you, Well, I need to see proof of that, can you send me a copy of the recorded deed? Yeah, we're out, we're passing, because you're not gonna really buy it anyway. I can tell you from experience. <laughs> they never follow through. If you want yeah. to you know, if you want to go buy a car on Sunday because you need to drive work on Monday, and it's it, it, you go look at the car and the person clearly uh, purchased the car or they're they're they are aware of the fact that the car is for sale. They've marked it up a thousand bucks, but you like the car. You think it's a fair price. It tass- passes all your tests. Are you really going to say, well, you don't, you don't get into it, right? It's the mm-hmm. same thing with real estate. You know, there's two types of people that ask these ty- this question, tire kickers, like Jill just said, and people that are really looking, um, they're just doing the, a, re- a rational and reasonable amount of due diligence to make sure they don't get screwed. And, you know, it's kind of your job to develop a sense for that. If it's the, for the first one, you can just say no. The second one, you really need to work with them and say, yeah, I, I respect that. We're, we'll do, you know, let's take, 
this is why it's going to work. Well, I was going to add in my situation, I really did own that property. I really did have the title recorded, done, ready to go. And it's, and the whole point was, it was just, they weren't the right people. I, I have tested it. I sent them, here's a recorded deed. See that? That's my name on there. Now let's talk about it. And they're like, oh, why well, I need to know this. Now I need to know that. Yep. Cause you weren't real. <laughs> you weren't real serious. So got it. There's no funny business going on in this business. Once in a while, I, I talk to a real seasoned real estate guy. I Sometimes they're land people. Mm-hmm. And by the way, the more seasoned they are, the, the least amount of uh, talent they have to close their own deals because they've been using a title agent their whole life. So a lot of times I'll still speak with these seasoned guys and they're like, what are you talking about? You do it that way. What about this? What about this? What about this? I said, look, hey, listen, uh, take the gray hair out of your ears and listen for a second. This is how the, it's done in the 21st century. Dude, you can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. It's true. Uh-oh. You know, well, they all have one gray way to hair in their ears. They're older. They're usually older people that what? think that it's all figured out. What if it's silver? What if it's oh, OK, silver? blue? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> wow. People get set in their ways. And we just and there they went. Just I heard them. the radio went off. Just kidding. Radio. Yeah. They're the same people who don't know what a podcast is. Okay. So they're not listening. Oh, oh now I know where you're going with that. If you have okay. a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us. Yeah, let's move on. On landacademy.com. That's how I get out of these things with you. I just oh transition. Gosh. I just say the transition. I'm just going to, f- I'm going to say something borderline offensive and watch till. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's- Today's topic, land investment only works with motivation. Man, is that true? This is the meat of the show. Where do I start? <laughs> this is Jill's game. I was waiting. I'm like, he wrote this for me. I did. All right. So here are my points. This is such a good topic. You know, finding distractions are very, very easy. Ignoring them is hard. So that's my my first point I want to make is get yourself on a path and 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 set small set goals and don't don't waver time I'm gonna tell you I'm just gonna read through all my notes here Jack and then we'll yeah. talk about it all okay so that's my one point my second point is time and patience are key I mean no one's gonna be a pro instantly so you, you got to, ex- to help you stay motivated, you got to expect that. You have to expect you're going to screw things up. You're going to send mailers wrong. You're going to price things wrong. You're going to talk to people wrong. You know, there's a lot of things you're going to do deeds wrong, you know, and you got to be ready for it. And it's okay. We all did that. You know, I've shock, shocks. I've had things recorded, you know, return from their quarter saying, uh, you forgot to enclose the check. Oh, yeah. Guess I did, you know, little things like that. And it's okay. You know, the best thing is, it's kind of like I tell the kids, you know, be upfront and honest and say, yeah, I screwed up. How can I, how can we fix this together? And and then it's all good. So then, then my last thing is about staying motivated. Goals really help. And for me, I set small, attainable weekly goals Others, I think, like Jack, they. I think you have daily goals because I've seen your your calendar and it's pretty um, detailed mm-hmm. on what you're doing er- all day, every day. Mine's not so s- specific, but I have goals for the week. So, where do you want to jump in? I had a <clears throat> consultant call last week. Uh, a guy called me and he said, "And I would do these on Wednesday." So members can, it's a members only thing. I can, I review their data when they're, before they're ready to send a data, a mailer out to make, especially if they're brand new to just say, you know, I would would change this or this. I also do a deal review. And so I ask people before to give me as much information via email that they can so I I can prepare because I can't, if I just get blindsided, it's hard to prepare at the same time while I'm on the call. So a guy call, uh, I had a call last time and he said the whole, this is the whole thing. I, I just want to tell you my story and thank you. I'm like, oh, my first reaction is, oh my God, what's this going to go like? I get on the call and the guy says, I, you're, I'm, I've been with you. You have never even seen my name. I'm sure of it. I've been with you guys for at least six months, maybe eight months. And I want to thank you because I have no time. I have four children. 
no time, full-time job, and my wife works full-time. I have allocated two hours on Sunday night after everybody's in bed to do this, and I've closed 14 deals. That's awesome. And I just, you know, you get all misty and stuff, because that's why yeah. Jill and I are doing this. We don't need to do this. I know. It's that's so why we do this. Good. So, with And so whatever motivation that, look, my point is this, what, what that guy was motivated. That motivated you. Well, it motivated me, sure. I mean, that's why we do this. Yeah. You know, that's why we fight. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I don't know what kept this guy motivated, but I think uh, I'm going to tell you another story. Because okay. we have time. And you're going to love this, Jill. So Jill and I are in Costco recently. And two people walked up and said, are you the land people? Aren't you guys the land people? <laughs> the husband did. Yes. And uh, yeah, we said, yeah, we're the land people. We've been listening to you and watching you. And he pulled his wife over and she was all nervous, which just cracks me up because... We were so like the most cool. regular people there ever, ever are. Thank God we were presentable that day. And I said, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, I got to ask you what, what, because I'm always wondering why people, how people find us and why, why they stick around and listen. And he, these aren't members, by the way. They're mm-hmm. just people that I, I'm not sure exactly how far they are. I think th- I got the feeling they're new. And I said, what's the deal? What, why? And he said, I got to do something. Mm-hmm. And that just stuck with me. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you mean you got it? He's like, I, you know, we can't just, we have regular jobs and stuff, but it's just not. We got to do something. Mm-hmm. I love that. Exactly. So he's motivated. Whatever motivated him to do this and listen to this stuff and, and whatever version that he's, how, however he's pulling it off, he, something clicked in his head. I got to do something. Right. You know, maybe it was kids. Maybe it was uh, too much responsibility at work. Maybe it's an idiot boss. Who knows? Mm-hmm. All kinds of stuff motivates you. Whoever you are listening to this, there's motivation that, right in front of you you just have to kind of look at it right and I think that's how you look at it Jill that's how you find inspiration and motivation like I think it's person specific don't you it is because yeah everybody's motivated by different things I think and you're right could be security could be taking care of kids it could be just just an underlying theme for there's I've got to be doing something more and I think that's, you know, it's interesting. I think, I don't know if you feel that way, Jack, but that's how I feel. I, I really feel, I'm going to get all philosophical here, but <laughs> I really feel uh, an underlying purpose for why we're doing this. And the more people that we help and the more stories you come to me with, like that guy that did the 14 deals, the more Luke Smith's out there and the Daves and the, and the, you know, all of our, I could go on and on and on about, I have a laundry list of all of our people that are killing it. And, and, uh, and it's all working great for them. That's my purpose. And that's for land, motivating, for land Academy, yeah. right. Motivating me. That, well, and that's me what's too, pushing for forward all this other stuff because, well, if I can, I can help these people do this. Hey, now I know I can help those people do that. And now I can help these people over here. Oh, and I can write a book that's going to help these people over here. And we're starting some meetups. Hey, we're going to, we're going to help some other people with some little things around here in South Bay and in Scottsdale and, all kinds of good stuff. So, yeah, you heard it here, by the way. If you want to come meet Jack and I, I'm hoping to wrap it up um, here very soon. So by the time by the time this airs in a few hours, it may be ready. So go to, go to meetups, and if you look for land investors, you will find us. You know what motivates me to buy and sell property, though? Which is really what this is all about. Land Academy was just an unintended consequence. Mm-hmm. I am literally... And I mean, literally addicted to buying real estate. Oh, huh. I mean, some people are addicted to all kinds of stuff you can get addicted to. Yeah. I have to do, I start to feel strange. You land junkie, buy, you. Buy real estate. <laughs> it's like, I had a partner one time, he said, stick, take the needle out of your arm, man. Yeah, you know what? That's, I like land junkie. That's good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I get it. That's really funny. Oh, you're right. Join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how, how to use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Motivation is so important. It is. You know, you I could have all the resources, all the money, all the time in the world, but if you're not motivated to get up and do this, it doesn't matter. I wonder how you teach discipline. You know, you should take the Marine Corps or something. Use it as an example. There's some former military guys that we have in our group that just won't stop for anything. I'm real impressed by that. Yeah, it's very true. 
what motivates you? Seriously, the feedback, because what I heard you say yeah. on, the, on the show is a feedback. What motivates you to, to show up for this show on time, let's say? Is it the feedback? No, I'm afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I wonder if there's a, there's, like, there's no child social services for... Wives. Spousal <laughs> social <laughs> services. No. He's Jill. He's mad at me again. Oh my god. Just gosh. kidding. No. 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 Okay, here's what you wanna know what motivates me? Yeah, I'm afraid now. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> sorry, it's not you. It's bigger than you. All right, I'll tell you I'll tell you mine and you tell me yours, please. Okay. Okay. Show me yours. Yeah, I'll show you mine. You show me yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. Okay, two things motivate me. Um, number one, you touched on, and it really, it's like, when I hang up the phone. Don't people, touch it. Just show it. Sh- sh- Don't sh- touch on it. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> no, when people, when people, uh, I, when people get, I've had people tear up with me in situations. I've had these handwritten notes and and beautiful emails and I sit there and I tear up that's motivating to me it's like holy cow obviously doing the right thing don't stop so that's number one and number two I simply love our lifestyle yeah. I love I love doing this I love my crazy schedule as crazy as it is um, I I love where we live um, even though it's split between two places it's great because we're we have people in both worlds that that are that we help and um we might add a third one at some point you know where might be right. you know who knows we might be plopped i'm going to new york next week you know and meeting with some people and i i love so these all these these things motivate me so oh and and i know our kids are proud of us i know that they don't say it i know they don't say it but they're proud of us and that motivates me you you know now that i'm thinking about it show me yours <laughs> when I was a partner at KPMG, I, you know, all I could think about was how to get out of there, mm. you know, and I really succeeded at that job. It was getting new customers and clients. And, uh, uh, that really motivated me to get, to get into this business and really do it, do well at it because right. I, you know, I, this is a sentence I said to my set, uh, myself, I, in my head, I would rather flip burgers for the rest of my life then be a partner here for one more year. And now mm-hmm. this is a, you know, a very well paying job with, uh, you know, some incredible people at that level. And, uh, I just, I'm very, very motivated by not having to go into a job every day. Uh, I'm not saying uh, that, I'm not saying that, um, that's everybody's motivation. Right. I'm just saying for some reason that, that I don't know why that was yours. Yeah. And that's okay. Like our time is our, we have choices. Yeah. Our time is our own. It's very true. So it's never been making a pile of money, although that's what ended up happening and happens now. Um, that was part of it, but that my real me motivation. You're doing, on the right, you're doing the right thing. My real motivation mm-hmm. is not to have a boss mm-hmm. and not to go into some place and work and have it suck for eight or 10 hours every single day. Exactly. You know what I think we should do after this show? What? Go to a movie and go goofy. Exactly. Okay, That's go. what I'm saying. Okay. We do that. How many times do we do? We probably once a week at least. We do that. We're good at we that. We just look at each other and say, you know what? I'm done. Our staff's like, there they go again. No, our staff's like, thank God they're leaving. Well, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and this, this was, was the Cash Flow from Land, land show. show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.